This videotape will show an operation the machinist performs frequently, cutting external threads on the engine lathe. This demonstration will show how to cut one of the most common forms of screw thread, the unified, a 60-degree V-type thread. Proficiency in machining threads requires considerable practice and a thorough knowledge of the screw thread system. After viewing this videotape, you should be able to list the safety precautions to observe in machining screw threads, describe the procedures for grinding a threading tool, and describe the procedures for roughing and finishing external threads on the lathe. Observe these safety precautions in machining external threads. Always wear safety glasses. Remove watch and rings. Wear short sleeves or roll them above the elbow. Until you are skilled at threading, use a lower spindle speed. Check the tool set up for clearance before starting to thread. For roughing and finishing threads with one tool, use either a preformed 60 degree tool or grind a tool bit to a 60 degree included angle. Grind half of the 60 degree included angle, or 30 degrees, on one side of the tool bit blank. The side relief angle should be large enough to allow for the helix angle of the thread plus an additional 3 to 6 degrees. Otherwise, the tool will rub in the side of the groove as it is cutting. Then grind the opposite side of the tool bit to form the 60 degree included angle. 3 to 6 degrees of side relief should be ground on this side also. Check the included angle of the tool point with a center gauge. The back rake of a threading tool should be zero degrees. For this demonstration, we will cut a 3 quarter 10 UNC thread to a class 2A fit. After the tool is properly ground, place a 3 quarter inch diameter workpiece in the chuck. Face the end of the work and chamfer the end to a diameter equal to the minor diameter of the thread. Then machine a square groove where the thread will end on the shaft to allow for tool run out. This groove should be five to 10 thousand smaller than the minor diameter and the width of one lead of the thread if possible. Place the tool holder on the compound and the thread cutting tool in the tool holder. For this demonstration, we will use a preformed tool for roughing and finishing the threads. Set the compound at 29 degrees. By setting the compound at 29 degrees and using a 60 degree tool, most of the cutting action will take place in the front of the tool bit with a slight drag on the back to clean up the threads, thus allowing the threads to be roughed and finished in one operation. Next. Check the threading tool to be sure it is on center height. This can be done by lining up the tool with the center diameter of the work or by using a scale. Move the tool up and down until the scale is in a vertical position. If the tool bit is not at center height, it will not cut a perfect 60 degree thread. When the tool is at center height, use a center gauge to align the point. Hold the center gauge on the axis of the work and seat the tool point in the notch carefully. Then, tighten the tool holder in place. Now set the spindle speed. The ideal cutting speed for threading is the same one used for straight turning. However, inexperienced operators should use no more than 25% of that speed and even slower speed if necessary. Set the quick change gearbox to 10 threads per inch. With the tool away from the work, engage the half nut to check the direction of carriage travel. We will be machining from the tailstock toward the headstock. Take the backlash out of the compound and cross feed. 
using the carriage and cross feed, touch the tool to the end of the work. Set the compound and cross feed dials to zero. Move the tool off the diameter. Next, feed the compound in five thousandths. A general rule for compound travel is 75% of the thread pitch. For a three-quarter ten thread, the pitch is equal to one over the number of threads per inch, which in this case is one divided by ten, or one hundred thousandths. So, 0.75 times one hundred thousandths would indicate a total compound travel of seventy-five thousandths. For ten threads per inch, we engage on any line, allowing the tool to scratch the surface of the work the entire length of the thread. Disengage the half nut when the tool reaches the run out. Back the tool out using the cross feed, return it to the end of the work, and return the cross feed dial to zero, which is the reference point. Shut off the machine and check the number of threads with a center gauge or a scale. If the number of threads per inch is correct, proceed with cutting. If not, reset the quick change gearbox. Now feed the compound in another five thousandths and, lubricating the work, rough cut the thread. Take cuts of three to five thousandths until you have reached a reading of approximately sixty-five thousandths on the compound rest dial. Clean the thread with a brush. Stop the machine and using a thread micrometer, check the pitch diameter of the thread. The pitch diameter of a three-quarter ten thread with a class 2A fit can be found in the machinery's handbook. It is between 0.6832 and 0.6773. This thread must have more material removed to bring it to within tolerance. Continue machining the thread, reducing the depth of cut to one to three thousandths. Taking this finer cut will improve the finish on the thread. When you have reached seventy-five thousandths of the compound rest dial, recheck the pitch diameter of the thread. Take more cuts as needed, remembering to lubricate for each pass. The final pass should remove no more than one to one and a half thousandths to give a smooth finish. When the pitch diameter is below the maximum tolerance, stop machining, since the thread is to size. Do not spend time trying to hit the center of the tolerance. This thread has now been machined to size using one tool for both roughing and finishing. This method is used when high precision threads are not required. When very precise threads are required, use a two-step method for roughing and finishing. We will use the two-step method to cut a three-quarter sixteen UNF thread. For this operation, grind a tool bit to an included angle of approximately 57 to 59 degrees. Set up the workpiece in the lathe. Chamfer the end. And cut the groove for tool runout with a compound set at 29 degrees. Set up the tool in a tool holder. And align it to the center height of the work. Now align the front edge of the tool with a center gauge. Use a piece of white paper under the tool to show the space on the back side and the alignment on the front side of the tool. Set the quick change gearbox to cut 16 threads per inch. Touch the tool to the end of the work and zero the cross feed and compound dials. Feed the compound in five thousandths and take a scratch cut. Check the number of threads per inch. Continue machining the threads using the compound to feed the tool in. To determine the compound travel, use the formula 0.75 times the pitch. For this thread, it will be 45 thousandths. Continue roughing the threads 
until the compound rest reading is approximately 40 thousandths. Stop the machine and reline the tool with the back side of the tool lined up on the back side of the V notch in the center gauge. Again, use a piece of white paper under the gauge. Now that we have moved the tool, we must reposition it in the V groove. To do this, back the tool away from the work. Start the machine and engage the half nut. After the tool point is two or three threads in from the end of the work, use the compound and cross V to position the tool back into the V groove. The back side of the tool should touch the back side of the groove and the point of the tool should touch the root of the thread. Set the cross feed and compound dials to zero. Jog the tool slightly to see that you are just skimming the back side of the thread. Back the cross feed out. Return the tool to the end of the work and return the cross feed dial to zero. Engage the half nut and take a cut on the thread. It is not advisable to take a depth of cut on the first pass since we are just checking for tool alignment in the groove. Disengage the half nut when the tool hits the runout. Bring the tool back to the end of the work and return the cross feed dial to zero. Then feed in one thousandths on the cross feed dial. Take a cut on the thread using lubricant and continue this for about three to five thousandths or until the thread is cleaned up on the back side. The thread now has a 30 degree angle on the back side. Stop the machine and reposition the tool with the center gauge so that the front edge of the tool lines up with the front edge of the groove on the center gauge. Again, use white paper to help with the alignment. Since the tool has been moved, it must be repositioned in the groove. With the tool away from the work, engage the half nut. Using the compound and cross feed, position the tool in the V groove with the point of the tool touching the root of the thread. Reset the dials to zero. Back the tool out and return it to the end of the work. Bring the cross feed back in to zero and take a pass on the thread to check the tool alignment in the groove. You are now ready to finish machining the thread to size on the front side. Taking about one thousandths cut on the compound, clean up the front side of the groove. Then stop the machine and check the pitch diameter of the thread with a thread micrometer. The pitch diameter tolerance for a 3 quarter 16 UNF thread is 0.7094 to 0.7056. Continue taking one half thousandths cuts with a compound until the thread micrometer reading is within tolerance. When you have completed the operation to tolerance, clean the thread with a brush and shut off the machine. This thread has been finished on both sides with a finishing tool and will give a class 3A fit in a mating part. To review this videotape, you have been shown the safety procedures for threading operations on the lathe, the procedures for grinding a threading tool, and the procedures for roughing and finishing external threads on the lathe. The machinist is frequently required to cut external threads on the lathe. A thorough knowledge of this operation is essential in the trade.